Hey, Kowalski here and welcome back to another video. Now in this video we're gonna continue with um, you know the, the whole series with the World Chess Championships and we're going back to 1843 but this time in Paris. Now um, you know uh, saint Amand and uh, Staunton had their match in uh, London right earlier that year and um, you know, uh, we all know the Frenchman won, but this time they met in a more a more of an official setting in Paris, and the, the stakes were actually pretty high. The the stakes were about in today's money like ten thousand dollars, which you know is pretty good money if you're just gonna play casually. Uh, but you know, obviously they were playing competitive, and it was almost like a match between England and France, and uh, that was because Taunton has actually you know brought his uh, seconds with him that's like the first time that ever happened in history right like a player bringing seconds for a match that was you know something new for that time but you know they were all also backed by their chess clubs and uh, you know that's why it was more of like a national thing it was a really big event actually and um you know, we all know Staunton, like he designed the, the Staunton chess set, the pieces, I and mean, he was, um, you know, a great chess uh, personality, and uh, he had his chess magazine and everything. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, I just want to cover their match, and I'm going to show you two games, uh, you know, one of, one game that is uh, deemed to be, like, one of the most beautiful games that Santamon played. Sadly, he already was pretty much lost at that point. Uh, but you know, I, I just want to show you that uh, beautiful game. Now, um, this is uh, the game that I'm uh, talking about. And uh, you know, the title here under the webcam says third world champion with a question mark because you know, we're not sure how to, you know, um, integrate uh, Santamon. Is he the, really the second champion or is Staunton the second champion? But you know, uh, for me, I'm just gonna honor them both and uh, just. Um, show the matches and you can decide whether you um, name them the second or the third or whatever world champion uh, the thing is uh, you know that this is just uh, a match between them a match between the two leading players at that time so um, you know Sandamon has the white pieces and he opens with d4 now um, uh, Staunton here goes for e6 and we have a uh, queen's gambit declined actually and uh, we just have e3 a very very classical line and uh, now we have knight f6 and uh, knight c3 right just c5 this is known as uh, the tarash defense or in some variations right um here yeah this is the the tarash defense the symmetrical variation you're gonna see this game stays symmetrical for a lot for a long for a long time in this match i mean this here you know it's gonna transpose there have been some games played but um you know get, they get fewer and fewer but there's a lot of transpositions and you're gonna see that soon so we have b6 and um as i said this setup is pretty pretty standard pretty basic um and now um here you kind of should play c takes on d5 that's what i have played in the past in position like this um, but uh, here, um, Satomon decides to go b3, uh, which has been played, um, but uh, you know, it's not the best move. Now bishop b7, and now he takes the pawn. Uh, and this is like the first new move here, uh, bishop b2 has been played exclusively, like just bishop b2. But d takes on c5 is not a horrible move. Uh, now Staunton captures with the e pawn, maybe it would have been better to keep his bishop open and take with the knight. You know, this is what is suggested. Uh, as you know, now if, if uh, we have a knight trade, you can actually take with the queen and you have some really nasty pressure here uh, on this long diagonal. But instead of that, uh, we have e takes on d5 and now bishop b2. So now, you know, development is kind of complete. Now we get c takes on d4 and now we get both the players having an isolated pawn. We have bishop d6 and now if you look at the position again, you will kind of gonna see that this is almost symmetrical except this a3 move that white play. So we have rook e1. And this actually transposes into a game that was um, played in 2014 that continued Rook E8, um, but um, we just have A6, and now we are out of um, out of anything known. We have Rook to C1, and now um, Rook to C8. Rook to C2, trying to double up, and here's where the symmetry breaks. After Rook C7, Rook C2, um, he goes Queen C8. And uh, because you cannot go rookie eight, pretty much. If you go rookie eight, 
right? You're just gonna lose the rook, and now what are you gonna do? You're gonna lose the pawn because you, you move the knight, you're gonna get your rook attacked, and uh, this is just uh, very, very bad. So we have rook uh, um, uh, c2e2, queen c8 now, and uh, here the computer apparently suggests knight a4 to take advantage of this pawn, but um, you know. Um, also, b4 is a move, right? Just uh, just guarding against uh, anything. But here, you know, uh, Santa Mon just decides to play h3, you know, guarding against any potential threats uh, on, on the king. That's like the queen went to c8. So we have uh, now knight d8 and now queen d2. And we have now b5 and b4, not allowing b4 to be played, a very good move. And now just knight e6, completing the reroute of the knight. Uh, but now this allows bishop f5, just putting pressure on this knight, and now it's where the fun part begins. So we have knight to e4 here by Staunton, which is a mistake, but why it's a mistake is amazing. We have knight takes, and here you might say, well, black just loses a pawn. But no, this is actually not what, not like the right thing to do because here you allow rook c2 and there's no way to guard this bishop. Like just for example, queen e3 and you just take the bishop and now you just up a piece. Um, so th it had it, its poison like this move, but if you just play d5, now you're just fine. Because d5, let's say um, you try to move your knight, you cannot because the knight is pinned. So you're gonna lose the knight. So you have to take this other knight. But this move here is, you know, um, allowing white to go for a very, very beautiful continuation. Here, for example, if you try the... Um, uh, by the way, there's a lot of music outside because uh, there, there's like repetitions for a, a concert, that's why there might be music on the background. I don't know if, if uh, you can hear it, but it's pretty loud. I, I can hear it, like, my house is vibing a little bit. Uh, but anyway, coming back to the game, you have to take this knight, right? Because you cannot move the knight, and uh, you cannot really play any other move. So, um, Staunton takes, um, but now, um, here, um, rook takes on e6 is just a monster move. If you take with a pawn, now you're just losing, right? Because if takes on e2 and... Uh, I mean, not losing, but like drawing. Because let's say you take the bishop, now you're down the exchange, but you, you don't have that much uh, left going on for you. Because you don't have that many pieces. This is still a dangerous position. Like, you have to be careful not to play a move like rook c6, just completely giving the game away. For example, queen e5, now f6. And uh, now just queen takes on e2, and apparently uh, white should be winning here because of this nice uh, e pawn, past e pawn. But rook takes on e6 is just crushing. Why? Uh, because we have queen to d8, and um, now a beautiful, beautiful move played by Santa Mon. Here we have bishop to f6, uh, forcing f takes on f6. Because if you go back queen c8, then what have you done, right? So he takes the uh, the bishop, and now just rook takes on d6 attacking the queen but also preparing this nasty idea queen to h6 because uh, if you play queen h6 right away uh, you, you actually lose right because we have f takes on e6 and now the pawn is defended so you have to take this first and now queen h6 is a real threat that's why staunton plays king to g7 but now you just lose the queen and i mean you're just lost at this point they have played a couple more moves you know until staunton really really won all of the material that there was to win and uh, here you know he just uh, or sorry Sandaman won uh, all the material that uh, uh, Staunton had and here he just resigned as you know there's no more counterplay and it doesn't make sense to continue so that was like you know one of the most beautiful matches but still um, Santamon lost and uh, it was a score uh, 13 to uh, 8 that's how uh, they lost uh, how he lost and um, you're, I'm just gonna show you a very nice checkmate. Now, uh, Staunton actually has the white pieces in this game, and he opens up with d4. Now, we have c5, and uh, here, not taking the pawn, but d5. This is the best move. And now, f5 by black. We have knight f3, and now d6 by black. And, I mean, you know, Staunton was just, like, going crazy this game. Like, you, you shouldn't ever play like this. And Staunton is gonna show us exactly how to punish this weird setups. We have knight f6 now, and the funny thing is, uh, this is the 
the old Benoni defense, the Mujana formation, that's how Lee just names it, but uh, here there have actually been two games, one continuing g3 and one continuing e4, but Staunton chooses bishop g5, which is not the best move because um, this would allow you know kind of like a defensive formation but here Santa Mora again goes crazy and plays e5 and now e4 and now just uh, a6 like just losing a lot of tempo with all of these pawn moves he basically just developed one piece in like six moves um, e takes on f5 now bishop takes and and just knight h4 now just attacking the bishop and now just bishop c8 and uh, just bishop d3, I mean, you know, you're just developing with white, I mean, it has been 9 moves and black has only got one piece out and this piece is, 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 is pinned, so it's, it's almost like it's not developed. So we have g6 now trying to do something, but this move just loses on the spot. We have castles, now bishop e7 and pinning finally and now f4. We have c4, another pawn move, but this just loses, because you just lose a pawn, right? And uh, after you take the pawn here, just rook takes. And um, I mean, you're just winning, right? Um, knight bd7, it, again, it has been like 13 moves, black has only developed 3 pieces. And uh, we just have queen d4, putting immense pressure on this knight, pinning it again and uh, just knight e5, right, trying to block the pin, but this doesn't work, just rookie one, now threatening all sorts of sacrifices here, knight fd7, and um, now just a trade of bishops, and uh, simply knight to e4, now you're threatening to take here on d6, and um, you're gonna have a lot of... Uh, um, nice tactics with this pinned piece. So we have rook f8, now a trade of rooks, and uh, now just uh, the sacrifice of a knight. And if you take the knight, now again you're losing because knight f3 and you're gonna lose this knight, right? And you're gonna be down, just down too much material. Uh, and if you try king d8, as Santamon played in the game, we have just rook takes on e5 now, and after queen takes on d6, just rook e3, simply. And king c7, he tries to run away, but now just bishop uh, b3, preparing all sorts of rook maneuvers, but uh, a5, you don't even have to do that, you just have, you can, you can just play knight f3, simply, um, just bringing back your knight, and again, you're still winning, we have now uh, knight f6 here, trying to activate somehow the knight or the bishop, and um, now c4. So we have b6 and um, now knight e5, right? Just jumping in with the knight. And the funny thing is, after a4, knight f7 um, would have been the right continuation. But Stanton is gonna play knight f7 anyways a move later. That's why I got it mixed up. We have bishop c2, a3 now, and now knight f7. Um, so why this move is so great? Because after the move queen c5, this is um, actually, after the um, queen f4, this is now. Um, Mate, after after you take the pawn, uh, if you if you would have taken the pawn, this would have been like almost uh, almost mate here. Uh, for example, you could have tried uh, maybe a check and then taking the knight, and this would have uh, resulted into mate in a few moves. Uh, but the thing is, um, he played knight h5, and uh, this is actually a much more beautiful mate as this is forced now. So this is made in six, and Staunton found it. We have knight d8 check, now king a6, and this just loses, because you lose the queen, and, you know, Santamont being a good sport, he takes the queen and allows himself to just get made. Um, so, you know, a very nice game uh, by both of them, and um, sadly, um, for, for the French uh, uh, people, uh, Santamont lost, but, um, you know, this was peak Staunton performance, like this was his ultimate peak in uh, 1843. After this, you know, he got kind of sick and he couldn't compete at the same level with all of these guys and, uh, you know, he kind of had to give his title uh, to like Anderson after the tournament, but we're gonna cover that soon. And, um, you know, after that, we all know uh, who entered the scene, right? Uh, so, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I see you all in the next one. Kowalski, out!